We are at St. James Collegiate in the gymnasium. It is heading into holiday time, party time, and of course safe driving. So we have a very special guest here on Go Winnipeg, Joan Parsons. We want to welcome you. Joan, you are speaking about road safety, and we all think of road safety of like the roads today. We're in the middle of a snowstorm, but road safety in a different way. So I want you to share your compelling story that you're about to share with these high school students. Well, I tell them about my journey through life, which has been shaped by impaired drivers. When my son Kenny was 15, he was coming home on a Saturday night. He was, he was crossing the street when a 45-year-old man who had been in the bar with his co-workers all night, drinking, getting drunk, speeding, came speeding down the street because his wife had told him to get home fast, and they met at the intersection. My son was thrown 70 feet into the air, smashed down onto the roadway, slid about 70 meters face down, and smashed headfirst into the curb. And somewhere during that journey, he died. He died, and our world changed forever. But then we had to go through the court system because he was charged with criminal negligence causing death and impaired driving causing death. And even though he was driving that night without a license, even though he was twice the legal limit, even though he was speeding, because of the skill of the lawyer, he was acquitted of all the charges and walked out of the courtroom a free man. I walked out of the courtroom, got into the very same car, still without a valid driver's license and with the imprint of my son's body on the front. Then my brother was critically injured by another impaired driver. He was uh, standing at the top of the hill after his truck broke down and he got struck by a man who said he never saw him, never saw his flashlight, never knew he hit anybody left Steve laying in a field with internal injuries and arms and hands that had turned to mush. Uh, then a third impaired driver, my sister was driving her husband to work on a Saturday morning and she was stopped for a red light waiting for the light to change when a young man who'd been partying all night came flying down the street, actually going the opposite direction. And for some reason, a reason he doesn't even remember, he changed his mind about where he was going and he did a U-turn and he came up behind them. And he hit them with so much force that her car shot forward and was embedded into a pickup truck that had been sitting in front of her. And they both died instantly, my sister and my brother-in-law. I, I tell the students the truth. And I tell them that at that moment, when I saw that car and that man driving it, I truly wished I had a weapon. I would have liked to have a grenade launcher and I would have liked to have blown that car into oblivion. And I spent a few very frustrating years trying to change the laws, working with politicians, working with everyone trying to get laws changed and the courts to actually take action. And I quit in frustration because it was a very healthy place to be. And then I began speaking to young people. And that's been the truly healing part of my journey. Yes. I talk to them about choices. That's my main message is the choices you make don't just affect you, they affect other people too. And I want to ask you this question, as a parent and as an adult, I guess words of, I guess, healing and for other people out there that may be in the same shoes as you are, Joan. You know, I don't have a magic cure. I wish I did. But I think it's important to grieve, to feel that anger, to really feel it, to let it to kind of live through it, walk through it, and when you come out the other side, it can, you just take baby steps, and eventually it starts to get good again. But it's, it's a long journey, but I think you have to accept that anger and, and just let it be, let it happen, and work through it. And never think you're going crazy, because there's times when you feel like you're crazy, when you want to do crazy things. And people need to understand that when someone's going through it, to be there for them and just let them, if they need to cry, if they need to talk, if they want to walk, if they want to punch the wall, let them do that, give them the space and the support they need. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Are Joan Parsons. Welcome. She's the road safety guest speaker, speaking on behalf of MPI. And we all want you to travel safe, be safe this holiday season. For Go Winnipeg, I'm Tracy Koga.